Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 that do. Oh, uh, that's not going to make sense in uh, chronological order. No, that's no, a call they're forward. They're going to hear that in like a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a there, there's a sneak preview to what's coming. <laughs> what's coming for you? Uh, what's coming for your ear holes? Yeah. Ooh. It made me unha- unhappy. <laughs> it'll make it'll make you unhappy too. That's a cage match promise. Yeah. So I guess uh, we should say welcome back to Cage Match: Colon Roundabout Way of Meeting Nicholas Cage. I'm Sean, here with my co-host. Nick, I'm Nick. And our producer. Peter, hi. And uh, this is a special episode. We're going to kind of look back at the last, however long this has been, over a year. Yeah, it's, uh, I think we've gotten um, 15 months into this. That's pretty good. 14 months? No, going on 15. Yeah, that's a long haul. We, um, we got 15 did, more months to go, too. Yeah, we really did commit to this thing, didn't we? It was a lot I, of dedication to hanging out together. That's the worst part. <laughs> I mean, we do hang out together a lot, but I feel like this is kind of this is kind of a doubling down of the situation. What do you, what do you guys think? Do you want to just run quickly through the bracket and talk about any that like really stood out to you? I could do that. Sure. Yeah. Guide me through this experience. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take a look back on the previous year uh, yeah. from the from the beginning. Where did we start off? So we started off with face off and jujitsu. That was the right call. It was a great way to start this <laughs> off. High highs and low lows. Yeah. My only regret on this one is uh, the sort of the fault of my finding these movies is that that really was not a Nick Cage movie. Although the only thing that was notable about it was Nick Cage. So maybe it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was more of a Nick Cage movie than Kick-Ass turns out to be. Again, spoilers for the <laughs> Two future. Weeks from now, yeah. I remember him being in that a lot more. I mean, he made an impact, certainly. Just like he did in Jiu-Jitsu. Mm, true. And we're back on track. Perfect. Thanks, Sean. Good segue. Um, What's that? <laughs> but it, it also defined a lot of uh, a lot of good things for us, like genital swap technology. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah we started strong. Uh, so then next up, we went into Adaptation and Army of One, which is probably one of our more um, <sighs> contentious decisions. Yeah, I'll, I'll get a lot of shit for that, and that's fine. I'll, Rightfully I'll so. It. But... I still hold to my argument at the moment of if I was going to show somebody a Nicolas Cage movie, like if we were just hanging out 90% of the time, I would show them army of one before I showed them adaptation, despite how good adaptation is. Yes. You're not wrong. Yeah, I know. It's still a fair argument. I just am like a little cranky about it. I mean, <laughs> what other movie starts off with Nicolas Cage flying through the air on a red, white and blue hang glider with a boom box and a uh, katana? And a katana. Yeah. yeah, there can be only one. I mean, that is kind it's of incredible. a quintessential Nick Cage performance. And the voice. The voice was just incredible as well. It, it, it's a real delight. Man. <laughs> yeah, we'll get back into that soon enough. I can't wait to talk about that one again. See, <laughs> I'm already glad it won. I never regretted that decision. Yeah, I suppose spoiler alert for anyone listening to this, but I assume you've listened to most of our back catalog at this point. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about which ones win. Oh, yeah. Don't start in this episode, dummy. Yeah, idiot. Uh, so yeah, then we went into Pig and Left Behind. In. Pig was a big uh, breakout for me. And like, no regrets. No regrets there. Moving past Left Behind. No, Left know. Behind, I mean... We like, left that behind. It is one of my bottom three. It's definitely a bottom. This is a bad bottom. Birdie and the Wicker Man. I completely <sighs> stand by my decision to have Wicker Man go forward. That movie is unhinged. It's a it's a He really punches so many movie. women. He does punch a lot of women. I just hope more people watch Birdie because it is a great movie. You should. Yeah. Also, we established the rule that if if a woman is trying to burn you. Yeah, you can punch her. You get one free punch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to punch a woman, make sure she tries to light you on fire yeah. first. And that I think that caveat needs to be there. Not just burnt, but trying to light you on fire. Jesus Christ. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was my least favorite week ever oh ghost rider was terrific you knew it right away yeah <laughs> ghost rider versus doug ghost dog. rider is so amazing you guys are wrong and dumb it's so funny i quit but as bad as dog eat dog is it's also terrific <laughs> I, it's I got just, willem dafoe it does have willem dafoe uh i don't have any notes in front of me so i don't remember who the other 
he was a nobody yeah he was some like will sasso looking dude i was gonna say not will sasso he was in army of one it could happen to you versus racing with the moon that's, that was ooh. the sean penn movie yeah oh, where we that's saw right. sean penn's ball sack yeah, yeah. Which and was not good. even in the moonlight. It was just like daytime no. ball sack. Yeah, daytime ball sack as he jumps into some water. Yeah. So many, good. I mean, so many of these films kind of follow the same rough arc that a lot of them are bleeding together. How Had many the, movies have we seen Sean Penn's ball sack in? I, I can say one. <laughs> they work at the bowling alley, right? Yeah. All right. And he does that sweet dance move. Thing. I did like him in that. That was a good movie. I actually really liked that one. It was a good movie. Oh, oh, and our first little creeper dude that I love. Uh, Willem, the oh Willard, uh, Willard, yeah. yeah. God, I sat next to this guy at a in a yeah, comic I show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave all this nonsense in here too, where we're just like that guy. God. I'm making Crispin lunch. Glover. Crispin it's Glover. Crispin, Crispin Glover. Glover. I love Crispin Glover. Yeah, I forgot he's in that. <laughs> yeah. Plays such a tool bag. I'm yeah, he does. A, we put a leech on his butthole later. He made at least enough of an impact that I got to see or like it's remember true. him now. Yeah. yeah, he's a real fucking asshole in that. It could happen to you, though, I think, was the better performance by Nick Cage. And Whereas Racing with the Moon was really Sean Penn's balls. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They um, they took the spotlight. All right, then we went on to World Trade Center and Frozen Ground. That was a bleak. That was that was pretty rough. Frozen Ground was a, cool, was a good little crime drama. I mean, one of those based on actual event stories, so it's very dry, but compelling and Evil Cusack was fun to watch, and Nick Cage put a really solid performance in. And, and there was more boobs than in World Trade Center. It did have Michael Pena, and it did have Michael Shannon, too. All the yeah. Michaels. All the Michaels. Every Michael was it in was, that movie. I just remember that movie being as much of a fucking conspiracy or setup as the whole... Actual 9-11? Yeah. Being funded by people who were involved mm. just so they could tell their story and like sell books and shit yeah that's kind of fucked up yeah uh yeah so then we ended up going to national treasure book of secrets and sorcerer's apprentice i'm glad we did the sequel to national treasure before we did the first national Agreed. treasure 100 percent. definitely like the second one more second one's a lot of fun and if i had already been kind of like biased by watching the first one first I might not have enjoyed it as much. Yeah. Although I did think I do think we sent a uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice ahead. We did, which I think was the right choice because that movie is a lot of fun. Oh, that was also our first uh, double Brockheimer, wasn't it? It was. No, that was Turtle Tob, right? Oh, oh, yeah. That was two Turtle Tobs. Yeah. Two Turtles, two but also turtle two Brockheimer tops. films. And two Brockheimer films. Yeah. 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 We've got a lot of Brockheimer and two Turtle Tobs. Bubby Brockheimer. Then, yeah, we went to Red Rock West. Red Rock West. Against Dying of the Light. That was like... Was a, uh, Second Schrader. Yeah. And the worst, the worst one, because it just was it didn't even have like weird unhinged parts of it. No, it was just real boring. Red Rock West is probably the thing that I've got out of this that I secretly like love the most. Like that's probably one up there with one of my favorite Nick Cage movies. It's so weird and strange and funny. Yeah, it's just a different kind of storytelling. Yeah. Like it wasn't afraid to just like. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. No, it's like it's a weird comedy of errors. Uh, everyone's out for themselves, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Go watch that. Uh, then, yeah, we went to Raising Arizona and Trapped in Paradise. Oh, Trapped in Paradise. That one was just awful. Really interesting behind the scenes, like stuff behind it. But the movie itself is so bad. It's dumb. It's what you would expect to watch on Comedy Central when you're like hung over a shit on a Saturday morning. Or 12. Younger, or 12. Yeah, it's a shitty movie. Don't watch that movie. <laughs> no. But uh, Raising Arizona. Unless you need a Nicolas Cage Christmas movie. Yes. Then you can watch it. Yeah. So then Leaving Las Vegas and The Runner. I'm trying to remember what The Runner was. Oh. He was like a Mississippi uh, politician. politician or something. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another very. For sure. Not a bad performance, but just nothing substance in the film. It, yeah, yeah it's it like a nothing movie burger. That could be good if it were done differently and had like a good quality writer or something. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so if you just did it differently just and an somebody else wrote movie. it. <laughs> new cast. Yeah. New director uh, of I photography. Mean, still yeah. Nicolas Cage, but no, obviously. Yeah. Otherwise we wouldn't bother talking about it. But he would play the wife role. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Then we had Color Out of Space and Looking Glass. Color Out of Space is the movie that gave me the idea for this podcast. Because I was thoroughly in the camp of, oh, Nick Cage is just a bad actor in a lot of things. And I saw this film, assuming it would be bad. Because most Lovecraft adaptations are bad. Exactly. And just like, he was great in it. The movie itself is a lot of fun. It's a great adaptation of my favorite Lovecraft story. Really enjoy this one. 
yeah, that was a really cool one. And uh, the art direction in the movie really kind of blew me away because their use of colors was just super like strong and vivid and it caught my attention. The one downside to this one being the director had like a trilogy planned and then got canceled immediately after this came out. Yeah, Yeah, he had some, uh, what, domestic abuse allegations at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Fucking stop hitting your wives, dudes. Unless they try and light you on fire. Right. Yeah, then you get one. So speaking of hitting women, because I think that happens in this one too, Drive Angry and Stolen were the next movies. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, so drive angry i don't remember why we fucked how we fucked this one up as bad as we did didn't stolen go ahead stolen did advance yeah why because you're more interested in heist it was it was a top to bottom stolen had a more cohesive story was what we kind of decided i think i like the idea of drive angry more than i enjoy the film well, it also was like thoroughly in that 3D realm. So oh, everything yeah. was like an axe flying at the screen. It's yeah. Like, Jesus, this is fucking insufferable. I think it's also just like 20 minutes too long to keep my attention. So Peggy Sue got married in the family, man. Uh, he like falls asleep and he's like a rich wake, hotshot fuck. Wakes up with kids and stuff. Yeah, and like wakes up with his high school girlfriend. Learns to love that. And yeah, it sells itself as kind of like a comedy romp and it's just depressing. Right. And Jeremy Piven is his, his like, oh, buddy. man. Yeah. The first time Jeremy Piven's just a solid dude instead yeah. of just being a <laughs> shitty bro. Super fuck. Yeah. That was a good performance by Jeremy Piven. It was. Then we moved on to City of Angels and Kiss of Death. City of Angels sucks. That's yeah. uh, for sure. Sucks. Oh, Kiss Bottom of Death. Three. Our first. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He uh, he lifts uh, Hope yeah. Davis. Yeah, and, he uh, bench presses her. Hope da- yeah, it's bench his first, Davis. Uh, first Chucks, appearance as a heel. Chucks a guy via the neck oh, from yeah. a cab i loved his bedazzled um inhaler though yeah that was fucking great yeah it, it was definitely his like buffest role yeah, yeah. and his like cut out tank tops He's Man, a sexy motherfucker that was a good role yeah i like that one we picked right yeah no that was good i enjoyed that a lot i'm <laughs> looking forward was, to uh, revisiting that vampire's kiss in between worlds that was a weird week weird week for sure it was one of those ones where I had to watch Vampire's Kiss twice to really appreciate how good it is. Oh, that one's right up there with like uh, Raising Arizona for me and just like absurd, loved it from the get go kind of movies. Vampire's Kiss is the one I tried to watch on an airplane, but there were a lot That's of right. boobs. <laughs> so I had to like, I mean, I did watch it all, but I, I had to shield it a lot. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's one of those movies that like I I really appreciate how much of it is existing in the zeitgeist for everybody. Like everyone just knows certain bits and pieces of that movie, and like there are other you know Conner even if it's and, just like stills from yeah, it. Right, exactly. It's it's a very memeable movie, and I I think it's really made an impact. Uh, then we went to uh, The Rock and Bangkok Dangerous, the fucking one of the worst movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, The Rock's pretty rough. <laughs> You hate Bangkok Dangerous, too. No, I I definitely hate Bangkok Dangerous. Bangkok Dangerous is bad. It's just boring is the problem. It is a like, boring movie. It's not bad as much as it just doesn't give you anything. It, like, it just sucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, then Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent and The Trust. Oh, I that was a good matchup. I loved The Trust. And while I, like, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent is a lot of fun, I think I'd rather watch The Trust again. I know Unbearable Weight went forward, but... yeah. Oh, the trust was the uh, did not go ahead. Elijah Wood, Elijah yeah. Wood movie. Yeah. That one was fine, but I don't. It never really like peaked me. Mm. While unbearable weight at least got me laughing and rolling on a consistent basis. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Unbearable weight's just a more consistent movie. It, I mean, it doesn't offer anything to the greater pantheon of Nicolas Cage. Well, little as, Nicky. Aside from like. Good fan service. And we know that Nick Cage smooch is good. And he deserves a fan service movie. That's true. Once you have a hundred titles to your name or a hundred credits to your name, you deserve to have a movie that just kind of toots your own horn. I love a good self tooting. <laughs> oh, man. If I could toot my horn. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. So then it was Joe and Zondali. Oh, that was a weird movie. That that was a great week. I wish both of them could have gone forward. I understand that obviously Zondali <laughs> sucks a lot, but I just want more people to see it. Also, people it's should just, watch that. Movie. I'm upset so that movie's weird. not memed more. It's so weird. Him with the paint, like just splashing it all over his face. Yeah, <laughs> and just Judge Reinhold's like 
slow turn to the camera. Oh, man. <laughs> Am I the cuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zondaly. everyone, go watch Zondali. Yeah. It's also where we, where we learn uh, the proper pronunciation of cuckoldry. Mm. No, we didn't, oh, apparently. Yeah. Across and the board, we did not. And we had uh, Mandy in Prisoners of the Ghost Land. <laughs> that was a great week. Mandy was a terrific I movie. love Mandy. This is, this is maybe one of my only, like, regret ones. I think Mandy is a great movie, and I'm excited to watch it again and have, like, fresh eyes on it. But, like, it's so gross to watch that it like doesn't bring me joy and prisoners of the Ghostland was fucking ridiculous and it brought me constant joy yeah samurai town was super weird yeah like everything about prisoners was odd yeah uh, the, insane the color palette was jarring um <laughs> but i'm saying that as a compliment i guess uh it really upset me governor governor <laughs> Ah, that, that movie fucking rules. Go oh, watch that movie. Too. That's a weird one. I just, uh, I loved, I loved. I Randy mean, it's terrible. Start but... to finish, everything about it. It's weird hour long intro, which just leads into the hyper violence. Yeah, I mean they're both great, but that is one of my only like. I'm a little salty that it couldn't have been both of them. Yeah, then we had National Treasure and Primal. Mm, this is one of the ones that I had to choose on. We had, we had. Uh, Peter made Nick and I leave our knives at the door for this one. Yeah, because uh, we all know who would win in a knife fight. Yeah, not me. Peter. Why? Because he has all the knives now. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. I have two. You have none. Uh, Man, I still hold that in this matchup, my time is gold. And the fact that I could spend a half an hour less watching Primal and just enjoy a shitty movie versus a two-hour Brockheimer kind of just mid-movie. Uh, I just think Nick Cage is so forgettable and primal. Yeah, Aside he, from marching down a staircase, it, God, we're going to get into that's a the fist second fight one. again. Oh, see? So it's not even <laughs> until the second one that I give a shit about that. Role. I love him in National Treasure 1. I think he's, I think he's great. Yeah. It, it's a fine movie, yeah. but I don't have two hours for that. He's just such a shitty person on top of everything else in Primal. I'm still going to watch that movie periodically and, <laughs> and talk to Sean about it. Well, you're going to make Sean watch it occasionally, too. Yeah. Surprise. I'm just going to slip it in. Primaled. And I'll put the movie on, too. <laughs> oh. Gross. Uh, then we went to the Valley Girl and Weatherman matchup with Shay as our guest. I watched weatherman like when it first came out on dvd and i remembered it being great and then i watched it almost 20 years later and it's still great yeah i, I love gonna, that movie i was about to get upset no the weatherman <laughs> was a terrific film he gets chicken nuggets thrown at him i'm, I'm sad though because valley girl was ridiculous like such a, a goofy a snapshot of the 80s kind of a movie yeah and i really enjoyed that and yeah. the music was really good too it had a great soundtrack and it was a terrific 80s teen movie and it was a uh, wind talkers and bringing out the dead that was a intense episode that was a lot and just fucking it john the... woo makes shorter films yeah you you don't have that much to say which yeah. i really like bringing out the dead absolutely terrific movie wind talkers was good that it that was. was also the first time I'd seen a war movie in a while, too. The definite easy choice was bringing out the dead. And the correct choice. The next episode that we ran into was where I lost my shit, because it was Mom and Dad versus Next. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird listening to myself, like, absolutely <laughs> busting up laughing. Jessica but... Beale exploding is the funniest <laughs> thing ever. It is. And it's they show incredible. it. So many times, God. and it comes out of nowhere. She just explodes. I mean, she's tied to a chair of C four, but you don't expect her to actually explode. That one was amazing, though. I, I loved it. I hate that movie. That so movie's much. so terrible, but that episode is great. Uh, yeah, and we had Con Air and Rage with my brother. Oh yeah, your brother was in Rage. Yeah, exactly. He was enraged <laughs> by, by recording with us. Yes, um, Con Air. Easily my favorite of the action, like the main action trilogy of Cage films. I think I have to agree with that. Yeah. Like Moonstruck and Honeymoon in Vegas. Good matchup. Honeymoon in Vegas is such a weird film where I don't like anybody. It is a nice uh, two, you know, romantic comedy kind of movies yeah. about similar infidelity themes and stuff. Uh, you know, 
was a, it was a good time. Share. Got Share's to great. Share. Yeah. Share was great. Uh, got to find out. I make a decent share. Yeah. People in the Seattle area, SIF is going to be showing Moonstruck in their theaters in October. I think it's like late October. So there you go. I could be wrong about that. Look at the SIF website. I don't know. If you're not in Seattle, cool. Thanks for listening. Oh, also uh, uh, to our Richmond listeners, I don't know if this happened yet, uh, but The Bird is doing a cage match for movie Nick Cage series. Not related to Not us. related to us. They're just calling it the same thing. Yeah. Punks. Yeah. Ding dongs. Yep. So I don't know. Look out there. There's there's Nicolas Cage movies. Playing people people love Nicolas Cage wherever you're at. Then we had um, Lord of War and Captain Corelli's Mandolin, which was one of the weirder. I was expecting that movie to be so much worse, considering how much like flack it gets like uh, out there. But it's a fine it's a fine little film. Yeah, it's fine. It's exactly what I would expect to watch on like a Sunday afternoon on network TV. I don't think Lord of War is getting a lot of Sunday afternoon play. I w- also thought Lord of ABC. I really expected Lord of War to be better too. Yeah, that's kind of my my thinking too. It uh, really kind of it's all downhill after the opening sequence of the bullet going through its life cycle. <laughs> and someone so else's life cycle. The credits were your favorite part. The <laughs> yes. Opening credits. I mean, that movie is good for its time period in the cageography. Yeah, it just didn't have a lot to stand up against. It was probably his biggest movie with a couple of years on either side of it. I just don't think that movie had anything to say in the end. No, there was no big... Apparently enough that they think they're going to do the sequel, but uh, then we had Wild at Heart and Knowing with uh, Daryl. Terrific. Loved Wild at Heart. Yeah. Such a fucking We got to see that in a SIF event. Yeah. That was a really fun recording, too. I had a a blast with that one. Yeah, thanks, Daryl. You're a mensch. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, and we are in uh, spider season now, so... uh you know enjoy that yeah and we were cocky the other day and we were like good thing we're done with spider season and well the I rain caught, started early then i caught one right in the face in the morning yeah <laughs> like, fuck never let your Still guard in down. the beginnings yep all right this is in we're in the last round through the bracket here this is our last four episodes was gone in 60 seconds and ghost rider spirit of vengeance i like how ghost rider gets its redemption with its unhinged sequel it is very batshit i loved it I wish there was a little more of an attempt to connect the two movies. Yeah, I mean, these are two definite standalones. The only thing that's consistent is Nicolas Cage. Yeah, it's it's and a complete his performance re- is not consistent. No, it's so. a complete reboot. And I like the idea that he's not like peak superhero guy anymore. Like he never takes his jacket off. He's a bitch schlubby, but his power comes from like hell. Hell. It's true. All right. Then it was a um, matchstick man and guarding Tess. Two weird movies. Yeah, I'm I'm a little surprised that you guys went with the guarding Tess victory. It makes sense, but I I feel like it was such a slow paced movie it, that really didn't have a ton to do. At but least Mexican is it's sold on the relationship between him and Tess. Yeah, and I really like their performances together. The ending is where it loses me. Whereas with Matchstick Men, I don't. I don't like the father daughter relationship. It made me uncomfortable. Yeah, Matchstick like Men made stuff. me very uncomfortable for a long time. Well, because like from the get go, I'm like, you're clearly an adult woman, <laughs> so you're conning this guy, and it's just it's uncomfortable. I guess I just don't like seeing people with disabilities taken advantage of so <laughs> strongly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, that's kind of really weird. Do abuse that, don't like, they? Like, uh, I'm usually very pro take advantage of people, but. But in, in this situation, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, come on. Come on, Sam Rockwell. Could Real dick move. Real dick move. Oh, yeah. And then it was Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans, <laughs> and 8mm. I am also a little surprised that... One of our hottest went, weeks. Yeah. <laughs> that we went with the snuff film? Yeah, I'm a little surprised by it. It's a good movie. It's a really I, good movie. I thought about it more after recording that one and i think i agree with you i just i really liked the the zany fucking performance of bad lieutenant a little bit more I but the movie eight millimeter is a better movie. i think bad lieutenant could have been better if it built to the pure insanity of his drug addled mind it just goes from i'm i'm a you know i'm a I'm shitty a, cop i'm a shitty cop to just insanity there's no build to it and it's not a great film i think if the film had been built so that everybody else and everything else about the movie was super straight, like crime drama, get Val Kilmer to like pull it back a little bit, do these little things and make everybody super serious and then let Nicolas Cage take it even up one more notch yeah, and have some kind of like 
visual no just like a visual distinction in all of the like weird iguana visions and things like that <laughs> i did love iguana vision. i just want more iguana vision. yeah uh but like have nicholas cage in his own movie essentially yeah like okay. existing w- in that world if they had done that maybe i i, I would have to see it I mean, we're still talking about Werner Wer- Werner Herzog, but uh, but I still love Eight Millimeter. Eight Millimeter was terrific. It's yeah. a good movie, and it's one of those things where um, what's the director? Dude, nipples on the bat nipples suit. on the bat suit. Brains. Joel Schumacher, where his weird kind of unhinged like cinematography really l- lends itself to the uncomfortableness of the film. Yeah. Like I see why he was the name he was, because as a child of the late nineties, all I know knew him from was the te- the worst batman films not the worst batman film that's still uh the dark knight rises <laughs> true <laughs> yeah we did get to watch a little bit of batman and robin at the bar the other day yeah and it was good it was a lot of fun i used to meet you i got to read all the bane lines <laughs> which were just grrr <laughs> It will be very painful <laughs> for you. <laughs> Explosions. Uh, and then we wrapped up our season with Willy's Wonderland and Snake Eyes. The best way to end this was with Willy's Wonderland. Yeah, yeah. that's a popcorn finale for sure. Definitely. And Snake Eyes is fine. Snake Eyes is fine. It was a an enjoyable movie. It doesn't hold up strongly in rewatches. No. Just because you know everything that's going to happen well, 30 I mean, minutes into the movie. You also know everything that's going to happen 30 minutes into the movie the first time you watch it because they tell you who the bad guy is. Yeah, so it's hard to watch like an additional three and a half hours of that movie Yeah, knowing all the conceits. Yep. But, but uh, Willy- <laughs> Willy's Wonderland, Nicolas Cage doesn't say anything. And, and he you still know steals exactly the show. what's going to happen. Yeah, you don't even need a conceit. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So, There's kids that are there providing dialogue that don't matter. Punch soda. Regardless, he's going to yeah, play pop. pinball. And I refuse to say that word. Punch pop. <laughs> I refuse to say the second word. So that was season one. Uh, <laughs> done. All it, in all, that's our covered brief recap as, yeah. as we only know how to do. Yeah, Very long. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed most of this. Uh, there's a good 60% of it I liked. Yeah. Okay. So I met the process, kind of... like hanging out together. Right. <laughs> We, yeah, that's in the part that I didn't like. Right. <laughs> I think we kind of covered it, but do you think there was any like really big surprise or miss out of season one? The big surprise for me was Red Rock West. Like, yeah, a movie I've never heard of, and it's one of my favorite films now. That was a real quality win. Boy, it's hard to think about like a loser that I wish could have gone forward. There, were, I mean, like aside from just saying Primal, Primal, right? But uh, boy, there there were some real real good movies. That just didn't get a chance. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. I, and we've also had a really good year of movies that didn't make the bracket, too. Yeah. Uh, this year alone, he's had four movies already come out. Yeah. He's got two more on the way. Yeah, it's crazy. That's a lot of Nick Cage movies. Well, that's interesting. Like, what of the movies that have come out would you have liked to see on this list that you think could probably go the distance? Okay, so we've seen Renfield, The Old Way. The Old Way. Retirement uh, Plan. And Sympathy for the Devil. Sympathy for the Devil. We're going to watch Butcher's Crossing, Butcher's Crossing and, and Dream Scenario. Dream Scenario. Yeah. Um, Sympathy for the Devil, I would would I would I probably put forward in a lot of matchups. That was a really fun movie. I enjoyed it a lot. It seems like if you could have swapped out like a dog eat dog or something with that. That, that would have been a good done fit. Done well. Renfield's Definitely. a lot of fun. I'd yeah. put that probably. I mean. Renfield and Retirement Plan both fit that kind of like fun just comedy. action comedy or action like mm-hmm. comedy horror they're just fun enjoyable movies and honestly that's great i love to have those and they're perfectly timed they don't take up your whole weekend they're not re-watching the lord of the rings or anything right and then uh the old way is just bad <laughs> it does have uh clint howard going my balls we love you clint howard come <laughs> hang out with us be on our podcast yeah tell us about nick cage or just tell us about your life as clint howard or your balls i don't know on that note though like in terms of guests i think for me i feel like guests really bring a, a really fun element to this entire thing yeah and I'm, I'm really pleased with everybody that we had on and i'm excited that in season two we're gonna have a huge amount of guests on 
basically every episode. A huge amount of guests, a lot of new guests, and a lot of returning guests. Yeah, yeah. So. it's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're going to get some some good new takes for the second trip around the bracket as we go from 32 to 16, to the Sweet 16. Can mm-hmm. we get sued mm-hmm. for that? For what? Sweet 16? No. Okay. Uh, we could call it the Slick 16. Slick 16. Yeah. Mm. What's the Elite 8? The then? Slick 16. Slick 16. God, that Jesus. sounds gross. It feels gross it in feels my mouth gross. to say it. It feels oily. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, so our round of Slick 16. Mm-hmm. Oh, we are going to. We're embracing that. <laughs> what about the Elite 8? How do we turn that gross? I don't know. We'll get there when we yeah, get there. We'll get there when we get there. We can yuck a lot of yums. <laughs> How has this like affected your life outside of this podcast? Because this is a large committed thing we've done at my job. I am the Nick Cage guy now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my big change is just thinking about how much time in a week I spend working on the posters, working on editing, doing the recordings, watching the next movies coming up. And, you know, I think we said it on our episode with Daryl, but watching any movie that doesn't have Nick Cage in it, I'm always like, something feels off. And it's like, yeah, oh, there's a missing element. There's a yeah. missing element. And it's those nasal labial folds. Oh, God, I love his nasal labial folds. Oh, what is it? I just saw Horn before I came here and he's like, do you still think Nick Cage is a good actor? I'm like, he's the best actor. He's like, I still don't buy it. I'm like, watch 64 of his films in 14 months and then tell me he's not great. Nick, how's it impacted you? I have homework at this point. Yeah, that's uh, fair. I was never actually like accused of having terrific taste in movies and life. So this, it's right up my alley. And uh, we now are the proud owners of a poster that Peter got us to commemorate the end of our uh, season of all of his amazing Photoshop work. Yeah. Thank you, Peter, for doing that. You're welcome. That was not really something we discussed going into this. It's kind of just a thing you... We like we discussed doing the face off one and then you just kind of ran with it. Yeah, it just ended up being a thing that I did for every episode. And And they're all amazing, (laughs) especially once you realize people actually look and listen to us. Yeah, (laughs) Uh, then you're the amount of time you spent on it definitely went up. The effort went up. Yeah. My favorite part was always finding the fonts or close fonts to. Yeah, you you crush it on the nerd. Yeah, dude. (laughs) Hey, typography is hot. Yeah. I'm still looking forward to seeing the finished kick-ass one with the fun. Oh, it, it's good. It looks good. <laughs> it's hard to read the words cage match because they block a lot of it, yeah. but it could be a lot of things underneath our bodies. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. So anything that you guys are really looking forward to for season two or no? <laughs> Part of the change up for season two is Nick and I are going to actually watch these movies together. Yeah. We've been- which we've had limited opportunity, mostly in our like bonus episodes, yeah. to be able to do this. So we're going to actually get to like experience these in a more like social, enjoyable way. Yeah. Which I think will add some new light to ways of interacting with and enjoying these films. Yeah. And we're going to have, like Nick said, we're going to have a lot of fresh blood in terms of guests. So mm-hmm. they're going to bring some new energy and new outlooks and opinions on, on all these things that we have now spent. Five days, <laughs> one hour and 49 minutes. That's pretty a good, good start. Yeah. We're going to have to explain this to our creator one day. Are you talking about me? Yes. <laughs> I understand. You're forgiven. <laughs> and just thank you to everyone who listens. I mean, we'd still probably be doing this if you weren't there. Our lives aren't that interesting outside of this. But it does make a, a difference. Like, if we <laughs> if we were having lower numbers or people weren't giving us positive feedback and saying that they actually enjoy this, like, I don't know that we would have tried as hard. We would definitely be more inebriated on a regular basis. Yeah. Instead of just a semi-regular basis. Yeah. And semi-inebriated. And thank you to all of our uh, all of our patrons. Exactly. Uh, our Sparkle Buddies, Josh, Sean, Josie, Rico, Matt, and Adam, and our Cage Dancers, Ira, John, Freeman, and Lance. We really do appreciate that. If you guys want to support us at all, it's patreon.com slash cage match. Also, uh, for people who aren't patrons yet, Meredith, I know you got a promotion. Fucking throw $5 at us. We are going to get better equipment, so the, that should help. The judge says you have to pay me $5 a month. Yeah. We're just $5 short of better equipment, Meredith. Yeah, so you could just Meredith. throw in $5 more, Meredith. <laughs> yeah, thank you all. And um, if you want to interact with us and post comments down below the fold or whatever the fuck Nick says, <laughs> you can yeah. find us on Instagram at cage underscore match underscore pod or Reddit at cage match pod. Those are the places you can find us. Please like and subscribe. And uh, enjoy season two. I hope uh, it's as fun as we think it's going to be. I don't. I hope to drive you all away. Good. We'll see who wins.
Bye bye. <laughs> Ooh, I now I'll save that for when we recap uh, when we do it again, because I have new theories on why they did that. Oh, that's good audio. Thanks for sharing that. Excellent. I mean, Peter can cut that. (laughs) I was thinking about this for the chore. (laughs) I was thinking about that in the shower this morning and I'm like, oh, this will be interesting. Ah, penis swap technology. Like I figured out why the government would do it. I also think about things Peter can cut while I'm in the shower. (laughs) You should probably edit that. T- take a second run at that. No, I'm going to slam that together in the worst way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby.